Adobe Photoshop just released a beta feature called Generative AI. By the time you're watching this, this might be available in the regular Photoshop version. But I'm doing some cool stuff like this for real estate photography where I'm adding art and furniture to a photo. You can even add pretty much anything. So here's a photo I took at the Niagara Falls, added a hot air balloon. This is a crazy photo where this is an old photo of an alley in Sion, Switzerland, where my great grandfather grew up. And I was able to take this photo. That's a vertical portrait style photo. And with generative AI, I extended the edges. Crazy. And then I added a tattoo to this portrait of myself. <laughs> pretty cool, huh? So how do we do this? It's actually pretty simple. If you want to play with this right now, you'll need to go to the Creative Cloud app and go to beta apps on the left side of the apps tab and then download the Photoshop beta app. Then whenever you're in Photoshop, you'll need to create a selection with any of these marquee tools. So the rectangular marquee tool or one of the lasso tools as well. And you want to do this in the area you want to add or change something in your image. So for example, for this image, I took the rectangular marquee tool. I made a little square on this wall. And now we have this new bar that pops up, which if you don't see it, it's up in window contextual taskbar. It has a lot of different options, but right now we can just click the generative fill and then type in whatever we want. Abstract art, canvas, print light pink colors and then you click generate and then it's going to work with the AI Adobe Sensei Firefly system to generate an image and here you can see that it popped up it pops up with three options you can click through them here and you also see a properties panel where you see your prompt that you gave also the three variations and if you don't like these variations you can click generate to create new ones it adds a nice little shadow to it to truly make it look pretty good and then you see in the bottom right that it adds a layer to our layer panel one thing you'll note though if i take my move tool now and i try to move this it's the whole marquee selection that i created before so it's not just the object itself. So within this tool though, we can give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, say we like this. From here, if we wanted to just select this object, we can use any of our other Photoshop tools to select this object and then create a new layer, copy and paste it, and we can move this around. We might need to add a little bit of that shadow back to this, but that's how you can work with this new generated image within your new project so similar to the it, i did the same thing for this one i added a little circular marquee and then i typed in hot air balloon you can be much more descriptive and you'll see that sometimes prompts work sometimes they don't i was trying to give myself a man bun and what it returned <laughs> was this which is awesome and then with that tattoo i typed in a black and white tattoo but then it gave me this option so and it gave me a few options so what i did was i changed the blend mode to multiply which i thought looked pretty good so sometimes you'll have to do a little extra work here what i did was i started with the image and i'll just do it here to show you what i can do so maybe i want this to be a sort of more wide view I'm going to go to my crop tool, extend the left side of this image, then take my rectangular marquee tool and just select all of this area of the crop that doesn't have an area, anything in it. Select just a little bit of the photo so it has some context and then choose generative fill. I'm not going to choose anything. I'm just going to click generate. And you can see that it did a pretty good job at that. I'm gonna look through these versions. That one, I like the clean version. Like, pretty incredible, right? If I'm not happy with part of an image, there's another way to erase or add to it. So say, let's go back to this one right here where, let me just get rid of the background so you can kind of see what we're working with. If I select the layer mask, there's now a subtract or add to mask. So if I subtract to mask, 
I now have my brush tool, which I can make bigger or smaller with the control option key on a Mac. And now I could just simply erase part of this, or I can add to it if I want to add to this generative fill. And these options and more pop up in our property panels as well, including the feathering of this entire mask that is created from what's generated with that selection I did before. So that sometimes works if you just need to erase a little bit because sometimes it generates like weird objects in the background. Like I think for this one, like here for this tattoo, it added a little bit to the right side that's like not the right color. So I'm just gonna take my subtract from mask and erase that bit there. Now I'd have to be very careful to get this edge just right, but that's pretty dang good. Again, this is available in the beta version. Eventually, I'm sure it will be in the full version. Let me know what you think, and if you have questions, let me know as well. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.